Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Talk PMA. Good morning. So we talked about, or you were taught, we were talking about earlier about um, how to become elite, an elite athlete. And you had some really good points. And um, as a parent, sometimes it's hard to wrap our heads around how much time our kids have to put in, in order to be an elite athlete. And we think, oh my gosh, I don't want them to be too tired. I don't want them to be overwhelmed. But is it their choice to do that? Is it their choice to do the extra to be elite? And if they understand that there's the extra time and effort they have to put in, um, is it their parent, is it the parent's objective to support them in their goals or to be protective and want to hold them back because they're scared that they're going to get too overwhelmed to burn out? Yeah. It's like, it's a hard fine line too. And, you know, we're in summer right now and I feel like summer, especially for athletes, like summer's made for athletes and it's made for your sport. Like you should take your summer. Yes. Have your vacations. Yes. You know, relax and have your summertime. But if you're dedicated to your sport or if you have like the goal of going to play college and on, your summer's dedicated to practicing, 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 especially for the upcoming season. And so I, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, we used to, you know, go to camps. That was our summertime. Like we planned out our whole summer to, this is the camp I'm going to go to and how many camps were we going to go to every week? They were, you know, for different skills, different levels, different um, types of camps because we knew that that was our off season and that's when we were going to gain the most knowledge. And usually between one summer and the, and the start of the school year, there's so much change in just your body, especially as as teenagers. Um, and the knowledge gets better. The knowledge is just what, for whatever reason that, that, not having school on top of it gives you that extra boost to be able to concentrate on your sport as well. Yeah. It's just, it's just a time to advance. And that's, I mean, that's why we have so many, like, that's why every single sport plays during the summertime or has practices or has weightlifting sessions or has whatever, because that's the time to excel and to advance. Um, Because I mean, if you don't and you only practice during your season, how are you going to go from freshman team to JV? Or how are you, you know, how are you going to move up? How are you going to get to varsity? How are you going to go play college ball if you aren't taking that extra time? Your sports are year are year round. If you're truly dedicated to them or to it, whatever sport that you're in or sports, you know, and that makes it even harder. Now I got to figure out how am I going to put an equal amount of time into both of these sports while excelling. Uh-huh. And so um, I've noticed, like, I have a couple parents who have talked to us about how, you know, we have three hour practice. So we have an hour of lifting and then two hours of just regular practice. And then we offer with our club uh, another like hour and a half to two hours of you know, like extra skills clinics. And then sometimes we offer morning practices. So like some days, I mean, you're spending 90% of that day with a couple hours in between of just practicing. Mm -hmm. And so we've had some parents who have been like, oh, six and a half hours is so hard on the kids. And that's too long for the athletes. And, you know, some, some of them are dealing with some like, injuries or issues, you know, like just shin splints, things like that. Um, you know, they're recovering from, and it's like, I understand that it is a lot of time, but I'm doing it too. Or you think that that's not a long time for me because I'm going from practice to practice, to practice too. 
I'm not getting a break and I'm standing and I'm, you know, moving, I'm working out, I'm doing all these things with you. So do you think that is not hard on my body too? And I'm older than all these kids, you know, they're, they're young. They should be pushing their bodies to their limits. That's, that's the point, you know, you excel at a younger age. It's going to make it easier when you go and move up to college to professional or B leagues or whatever, like, you know, but you set your base now. And that's why you have to be able to dedicate that time. And athletes need to understand that a lot of athletes don't understand that it does take an incredible amount of commitment to be able to move on to that next level. And the parents have to absolutely understand and be okay with it. If their kids are wanting to do it, let them do it. And if they come home and complain and say, oh, my body hurts, say, well, you made the decision to do all of these practices. It's all going to be for the better. You know, like you shouldn't, I don't think any parent should hold an athlete back if they're saying, I want to go do this. And you're saying, well, no, I don't think it's good for you. I, I think that you're not letting them achieve their true potential. And I'm hearing a lot that parents are scared of their kids hurting scared of their kids getting hurt, scared of their kids, um, just, just having a breakdown, right? So we're in our minds thinking if you're hurt, if you're not succeeding because you're mentally breaking down because you're being pushed too hard, what's my natural reaction? My natural reaction is to protect you. But what we need to understand is I'm getting hurt is teaching them getting hurt and you know, my muscles hurt and I'm getting challenged and I'm not able to do it right now. All those things are teaching us to be better, to work around those injuries, work around the muscles being sore. And it's getting our minds in that, that exercise of, I really can do this. I can get above this. And so as a parent, saying oh I, you're hurt I, you can't you're going too far you're going you're working at it too much it's too much on you well maybe it's not maybe if I just step back for a second and watch maybe I'm going to see something in my my kid that I have never seen before because they're rising above the challenge and then all of a sudden they're blossoming and they're getting better and they're all of a sudden their confidence is so much stronger than it was when I was saying, oh no, don't do that because you're, you're too tired. You're too hurt. You're too this. Yeah. Maybe you're not. Yeah. Maybe push yourself a little bit harder. Take a break when you need to, it's okay. But if this is your goal, then you need to go after it and you need to figure out a way to, you know, take care of your injuries. Absolutely. A hundred percent take care of those sore muscles, but those sore muscles only last for a few days yeah. and then they're going to get better and they're going to get stronger. And so we remind, so give it a chance to get better, to get stronger all the time. Yeah. Especially with like minor injuries, you know, shin splints, a uh, sprained ankle, <clears throat> you know, jammed fingers, things like that. Those will honestly get stronger and heal faster if you just keep going. Yes, do your ice, your rest, your elevate, you know, your stretching, your rolling out, your taping, whatever, all of your rest and recovery that you need to be doing, but it's good for you and it's going to make them stronger. You know, mm-hmm. when it comes to severe injuries, that's when you have to be careful about it. And I do still think that especially if you are still trying to pursue like you get injured in a sport and you're still trying to, you know, get back to it. I still think that you should, you know, push yourself, but there's a limit, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not as easy that way. You know, you, you have to be careful when it's, when it's a severe, a severe injury, but (laughs) you know, I, I went through a severe injury. I pushed, I pushed, I pushed. You have to be careful though. And I'm saying, you know, minor injuries can turn into severe injuries too. But if you're taking care of them and you're doing it the right way, you're going to be okay, you know. Um, And so it's just injuries put a whole nother play into it. But truly, it's just you have to put in the time. How 
how am I ever going to achieve greatness? How am I ever going to perfect a move, a skill, a footwork or whatever it is? How am I going to perfect it if I don't do it? over and over and over and over and over again because practice truly does make perfect Mm -hmm. and if I'm only practicing twice a week for two hours am I really taking the time for practice to you know make it perfect I'm going to still struggle and then I'm going to be frustrated that I'm still struggling with it after a month of it of only doing it two hours a week two hours twice a week or whatever Right. Because you're not putting in enough time. Yeah. I mean, you, it's, if you love your sport and you want to get to that next level, then of course you have to put in the time, like you're saying, you know, I think, you know, when my own story, you know, I wanted my sophomore year, I wanted to be a starter my junior year. I wanted to be the best shooter on my team. So I knew I had to put in the time. I knew that any time that I was home, any time that I had any free time, I was playing basketball. I was at the gym early in the morning before school. I was putting in the time and I achieved that goal for you. I, you know, we were always in the gym on off time. You know, if you weren't at practice, we were at the gym, we were working on skills. We were working on achieving better. You know, I'll never forget the story of you playing your game and you're in a big game and you broke your finger. We didn't know you broke your finger and we knew it was hurt. We just thought it was, you know, it was jammed really bad, taped it up. And you probably, you started shooting better than you ever did the whole game. Yeah. I think you made like 10 points right after you broke your finger. And, but it was your mental toughness that said, I love this game. I want to win. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm not hurt so bad that I can't play anymore. You know, granted later we found out you broke your finger, Oh yeah, but it was a great story. It was like, oh my God, she needs to break all of her fingers. So she shoots better, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that was, that was a, it was a double header. So like Friday we played and I broke it and then we played on Saturday and Saturday is when I had my best game ever, you know, dropped like 20 points and you know shooting all this stuff and I I mean I suffered afterwards yeah I definitely suffered afterwards but I was like I was excited for both of these games and I was really you know I was like mentally prepared before I had even broken my finger to succeed to play my best to you know like work on new things and just to you know be successful in my sport and I was really excited so you know, then afterwards at practices, it was like, don't, don't even touch my hand because the whole thing hurts so bad. (laughs) And my finger was like this big around and it was black and purple all the way down my palm. It was really, it was really gross. (laughs) I I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, she broke her finger. But at the same time, she's like, you know, she's the toughest kid I ever know because <laughs> he broke her finger and she still kept playing. And there was no question that she was going to sit out. You know, you just, you just knew this is what you wanted. So it was yeah. great. Yeah. Just tape it up and keep going. And yeah. I think that's when you like things like that is when you truly find out like your passion for the sport. It's the nothing's going to stop me. And I think. I've had a couple, I've had a couple times within basketball where I've realized my passion because of an injury, but I was like, that's not going to stop me. You know, there was times before I was truly passionate about basketball where I did get injured and I let it stop me. And so you have, like, if you truly want it, you're going to do anything it takes to get there. And sometimes you need that one thing to happen to really show you what it's going to take, what you're willing to do, what you're like, the comfort zones you're able to come out of, you know, like you're stuck in this place and, you know, something that might be scary happens and you're like, no, it's not going to stop me. It's going to, it's going to push me forward. It's going to make me even better now. And that's how you're going to find that passion. And that's how you're going to be able to say, I will give 
12 hours of my day to this sport if I need to, and I will. And I think that's, that's when you're like, okay, mom, dad, this is what, this is how it is. This is my goals. And I'm not going to be able to get there if I don't put in every single minute I possibly can. Right. And especially, you know, there's, there's times when you're the underdog, right. And you are told that you can't, or you won't, you know, you had that problem too. And I think, you know, I think it pushed you and gave you a little more passion because you wanted to prove people wrong. You know, it's like the movie Rudy. Have you ever seen Rudy? You know, he's wanted to play for, I believe, Harvard and he was small and he, I don't know if it was Harvard, Stanford, Stanford, one of, one of the big schools. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's okay. I don't, I don't know if I remember Uh, like, uh, it was it's a long school. time. No today, maybe I don't. I mean, it was no today. Anyway, oh, I think that's who what it was. I think I it was no today. I think so too. Anyway, you know, his whole thing was he was small, and they kept saying, "No, you're not. You're not good enough. You're not big enough. There's no way. There's no way." And because he loved the sport, and that was his goal, I'm gonna play for them. I'm gonna get on the field. Was he ever a starter? Was he ever a great player? No, but he played for them. He worked enough and showed him commitment enough that he did get on the field he did prove everyone wrong and it's such a great story because you know he was an underdog I mean there like there was no chance that he was going to play for them he didn't even have the grades to play for them right Um, and he just knew that was his goal that was what he wanted it was his passion and even though he wasn't that starter and what didn't get on the field all the time I feel like that was an elite player because in his mind, he was so committed to what he wanted that it's going to make him so much stronger in his life just because he learned how to overcome all the obstacles. And I think that's so huge, you know, and I look at you the same way you overcame so many obstacles. Um, They said you were never going to play college ball you know, and you got the opportunity and you did, and you played and you played for two years, you know, that was never going to happen, you know? So there's those stories that are amazing. And once you get in your head, Hey, this is what I want. And for parents, we have to let our kids want those things because that's their life journey. Let them have that journey. Let them let them hurt, let them overcome all the obstacles because that's what's going to make them strong for the rest of their life. Yeah. Well, and it's so incredible, even just as a coach to watch the progress and to watch the, watch them become successful, you know, like because of all of the hours that they are putting in they've grown and to see that growth is like probably one of the most incredible things and the athlete themselves might not even see it but like to be a parent to be a coach to watch it and be like holy cow you have gotten so much better and I'm so incredibly proud of you because you've dedicated yourself everything that you do is towards the sport you know how you eat how you sleep how your grades are you know the time that you put in the passion that you have, it's all towards the sport. And it's so, it's incredible. It's incredible to watch. And so for me, I'm like, how can a parent not want to see their kid just be so incredibly passionate about one thing and put all of their time into it? Well, it builds character. You know, if you help your kids build character, what kind of person are they going to be? What kind of amazing person are they going to be in the end? you know, and so help your kids build that character, build that strength within their own minds and help them to push forward. Cause they're not, they're not always going to be strong. They're going to falter and they're going to say, it hurts. I'm too tired. I can't do it. Help them take a rest and then help them get right back up and do it again. And I think, you know, as parents, that should be our goal is to help our kids build strong mental toughness in a way that um builds their character to be great people and to be strong people and not just give up when it gets hard yeah so I was 
scrolling through Instagram and there was this video and it was this kid, this uh, probably like 12, 13 year old boy. He took 60,000 shots in one weekend. Wow. Imagine how good of a shooter he is now. Imagine the progress he made in that weekend, three days, three days. He put all of this time in and imagine the progress, the percentage from the first day, the first hour to the last day, the last hour. Mm -hmm. And like that is just showing, you know, you can do it. You can take that many shots. You can do that many reps if it's going to make you the best you can be. Because even in that short amount of time, yeah, he took a ridiculous amount of shots but he got better and he's going to continue to get better from there. And so that, I think the point I'm trying to make is you can put in that much time because it's only going to benefit you. It's not going to hurt you. Right. Is it will not hurt you to put in that time. And that doesn't mean that he was sprinting to take these shots all the time. He's got his shooting gun, you know, shot shot, shot, you know, it's simple reps. He's, I mean, he's put it in the work for sure, but it's not like you're sprinting up and down the court constantly, you know what I mean? So there's ways to put in the time and still benefit from it where you're not overexerting your body and you're not overexerting yourself. Mm -hmm. Just sitting like, you know, I, I tell my athletes all the time, just sit at home and lay in your bed while your TV is on and just shoot the ball, shoot the ball in the air, go out on your back patio, go for 20 minutes and just do some ball handling, just dribble, just hold the ball, you know? And it's the same thing, you know, golf, just practice your swing. You don't even need a club, practice your swing, practice how it should go through. You know, you can do it with any kind of sports, baseball, football you know there's all things that you can do practice track practice your starting you know like just get the habit because sports are habits they're just consistent habits that you have to perfect and so if you can just take a little time to you know start in your starting stands and work on that first step you know for track work on that first step and if you get a good habit of it to do it the right way I bet you your time's going to go down. Uh And so it's just find any time while I'm sitting here watching TV, I can just have a ball in my hand and I can just throw it back and forth because that's going to get me more comfortable with the ball, more touches on the ball constantly. And it's just the more you do it, the easier things are going to be to you. So find a little time. So you don't, you know, you don't have to have a football field or a basketball court or a whole track to be able to do anything you have space use it use it to help you get better yeah absolutely you know again being an elite athlete is putting in the time and giving giving yourself the opportunity to get better by practicing all the time by visualizing what you need to do by you know taking the passion that you want for that sport and putting it to work and having the backup through your parents, through, you know, teammates, through your coaches, whatever it is, but, um, being elite means putting in the time. Yeah, absolutely. Just remember that it is okay to put in that time and parents let your athletes thrive and help them reach those goals, help them put in the time. And if they are dedicated and they're wanting to do it, just let them. And if they fail or they fall or they're hurting, then you can step in, then you can help them, but don't stop them. Don't ever stop them from reaching the goals to putting in that time because they, if they really want it, they're going to get there. Okay. So just remember, it takes a lot of hours to become an elite athlete and to go play at that next level. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Go check out our Instagram, our Facebook. Don't forget to go to our website and get your workbook on there, www.letstalkpma.com. 
We're super excited with all the new programs that we're coming out with. So go check it out. Send us a message if you have any questions and we'll see you all next week.